Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, the session this morning. I'd like to introduce your speaker, uh, Joe Altman, who I like to think is a personal friend of mine. He might not think the same thing, but uh, Joe has been doing this for over 15 years now. He is uh, the Director of Strategic Assessment for NRL Consulting. Um, he is a book author. He's written a chapter in a book on Groovy. Um, so he is quite knowledgeable about what he's talking. He's been on both sides of the world um, of the organization. So I'd like to have you welcome Joe Altman this morning. Good morning. <laughs> and the first time. Uh, so hi, uh, my name is Joe A. I'm an Space admin. So I have a story to tell you. So let's get started. The name of this session is Torn Between Two Worlds. Is Space a business or an IT tool? This is a question that I run across quite often in the work that I do. I'll tell you a little bit more about the work that I do uh, in a couple of slides. But there are a lot of organizations out there that are trying to figure out exactly where S-Space lives within the company. Where's the right place for it to be? Uh, and there are a lot of arguments uh, for it to belong to the business. There's a lot of arguments for it belonging to IT. I've seen it working well at a lot of organizations, and I've seen it misplaced in a lot of organizations. So I, I put this presentation together, and I, and I want to present it to you because I want people who are managers or admins or people that are at businesses where you struggle with this question because S-Space unquestionably lives in a gray area between IT and the business. I'm struggling with this area. Or if you're a manager or someone new to S-Space and you haven't really thought about this, uh, you're also in my target audience. I want you to, to hear kind of some experienced voices uh, on this question you may have to be making a decision about which departments to put your admins in or who to have what ownership of what tool. So with that, I want to tell you a little bit about the company. We're near the end of the conference now, so you've probably gone to sessions and seen this a bunch of times. So I'm going to go through this pretty quick. I work for NRL Consulting. Uh, we've got a pretty good track record of success. We've been around for a long time. We're the longest standing dedicated partner uh, that concentrates only on um, Oracle EPM MBI, and I'm happy to work there. Now this is me, I'll tell you a little bit about me. One of the reasons I wanted to do this presentation is from uh, just coming out of the work that I do. I'm Director of Strategic Services for NRL, which means it's my job to go and I visit businesses on short-term projects. I interview people all the way from the C-level executives down to the admins of the various EPM apps and I talk about the hopes and dreams for the company, plans for the future, troubles that you're having, obstacles that you need to overcome, and I help you figure out where you are on the roadmap, help you set a path to get to where you wanna be in three years. We need to make sure your people, your products, your processes, and everything that you're planning to do for the company are gonna coordinate, and a few years down the line, you're gonna be capable of achieving those goals. One of my, one of my assessment clients, here sitting in the front, so he, he can be here for a uh, witness. You can ask him if we do a good job with this or not. I don't, I don't see any others, but um, we do have one representative out there. And also, this is the book that uh, Glenn referred to. This came out a few years ago. I, I did put a chapter in this book. It's available still by Kindle. It's not in print anymore, but there's a chapter I wrote in that book about a programming language that I like quite a lot that's called Groovy and how I use it with S-Base. So that's all of that. Let's get down to business here. The question on the table is, who should own S-Base? Now before we can answer that question, we need to understand some extra things about S-Base. The first of those is, why does S-Base even exist? What's it for? Why was it created? So I'm going to walk you through a little story about a small company that needed to track their finances. So they chose Excel to do that. They're selling us some lemonade in a stand and they want to keep track of what they're doing. This is the first month of operations. 
made some revenue, made some expenses, and I profited in my business. That's great. Then I move into the next month, and I have a two-dimensional model now. I've got some accounts down the side, and I've got now months across the tops. Two dimensions, January, February, no problem. Excel's doing great for me. Get here. Now, i got another month. I've decided to add some accounts to my chart of accounts. So now I'm tracking, you know, actual uh, purchases and exactly what my expenses are breaking down to. So I'm getting just a little better analysis. I lost that granularity in the past months, but I'm beginning to track it here. Getting a little farther out. Been in operation for an entire year now, but I, want to, I still want to keep that old data and I want to track the data for the new year. So I'm adding a new dimension to the model. I need a year. So what I've chosen to do in Excel is I'm just going to use the next tab, right? I basically get three dimensions in Excel. I get rows, I get columns, I get tabs. So I'm going to just use that third dimension and I'm going to do a tab. Getting here, well, I'm starting to expand a little bit. I've got another branch. I'm adding another dimension to my financial model. I'm going to change my mind about those tabs and now I'm going to move my years and I'm going to just do all my years here, 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 here. And I'm going to have the different tabs represent my two branches. Now what have I done? I've already exceeded the, the capability of Excel to represent for me multiple dimensions. I'm simulating a fourth dimension just by having a two-dimensional array here and then another one and then another one. But it's not that hard. It's not that hard to understand. What I'm going to do now is add some more products to my line. I'm going to sell candy now. I've got to add it up here. I've got to get it added in the chart of accounts. Every one of my 2D grids now is larger than it was before. It's harder to navigate between my years within the tabs. Still not that big of a deal though. Now I've decided I want to do budgeting. How am I going to manage the fifth dimension in my model? Well, one thing that I can do is I can have a, a workbook for my actuals, a workbook for my budget, and a third work, workbook with little formulas in there that look into the other ones and put those numbers together. And so it's getting a little bit complicated now, but I've, I'm still managing five dimensions pretty well. Now I'm opening more branches than ever. I've got, uh, I got, uh, I'm opening them all over town, right? So I've got six different spreadsheets now. It's getting more complex. I've decided to flip and have, um, now my workbooks are for my branches. Now, I've decided to have some sort of divisional hierarchy within my branches. I'm gonna have a north division, I'm gonna have a south division, and so now I'm having a hierarchical structure. How do I do that? Now I'm gonna sum up all of my divisions into a worksheet that has formula references, and then I'll have another one that refers to those. It's getting more and more complex. Now, I see this all the time. This is actually a fairly simple example, but I see it a lot of places, not to name names, but I see it a lot of places, people that um, have done this, they've lived through this and stretched Excel and stretched Excel and stretched Excel to the breaking point and then they need a new solution. You know what, I had an error in that spreadsheet and when I expanded my model, I copied that error to the next sheet. And when I had another workbook, I copied that error in the next workbook. And this is an actual true story. I made these slides quite a few years ago. Uh, Glenn Schwartzberg noticed it just a couple of months ago that I had a math error in these examples. So I've been running my lemonade stands for years with an error in my financial analysis workbooks and I didn't even know it. And that's another danger that uh, you run into with Excel if you do that. So I've got this complex model. This is a simple example. I've seen some incredibly complex models get created. Um, oh, look at there, Glenn. This is what you get for putting things into the new template on the morning of your presentation. You get a line break between I and T. Uh, I will fix that uh, before I upload this version of the deck to the website for you to download. Anyway. There's other stuff I still haven't done yet that I would add to add even more dimensions to the model. Forecasting, versioning, I'm going to have more complex hierarchies than I, I have now. I might go and acquire all the lemonade stands from the next town. What do I do with my whole new company over there? 
How, what do I do if uh, I want to look at the data in a different way? I want to be able to rearrange it and pivot and understand it. I'm, I'm locked into one way that that data is laid out in the Excel spreadsheet. I'm married to decisions I made years ago when my company was way, way smaller than it is today. And that's why S-Base exists because Excel isn't designed to handle that many dimensions. I love Excel, I'm not bashing Excel. Open it at the beginning of the day, leave it open, might close it at the end of the day. I might just leave it up because I'm going to come back and get back to work in Excel later. But it's not a database and it's not a multi-dimensional system. So with that taken care of, can we address the question of who should own S-Base? I want to give you a little bit more information first. So we figured out why S-Base exists. Let's figure out what it is. Necessity was the mother of this invention, but what is it that got invented? I'll say S-Base is a collection of three things. The raw data, we were already dealing with that. We were creating a lot of data just with our lemonade stands. And any, any real business is going to have a lot more than that. I have an organizational structure. I need to organize my raw data points into roll-ups so that I can make sense of it at a higher level. I have calculations that I need to do on that data. I need to calculate metrics and KPIs, and I need to run uh, calculations across my entire data set so I can get even better understanding of that. That space essentially is about those three things. What it is not, it is not and a relational database. You've heard of SQL Server, you've heard of Oracle, you've heard of all kinds of relational databases. This is an entirely separate animal. I lived a lot of my life as a, a SQL type guy. C, uh, SQL language that queries relational databases is the thing that I've known how to do for longer than anything else that I still do. Uh, I began to write SQL in 1993, I remember, because I bought uh, all the books that went obsolete when the new 92 standard came out and they were on clearance at the bookstore. I just bought the old one because that's the version that we were on. Conceptually, S-Base takes all of those spreadsheets that we had to create. And uh, you may have several hundred to manage your close process, perhaps. I can take all those and I can upload them somewhere and have them stored for me. So that takes care of my data. And then from that, S-Base can derive tons, thousands, millions, even billions of new spreadsheets based on what I've already given it to work with. I told it, here's my raw data, here's how it rolls up. Please roll everything up for me that I could imagine, I could ever imagine to ask you what that data means to me and just pre-calculate it for me or, or be really, really ready to give me the answer when I ask you what it is. So we get tons and tons of data out there and when I go to access it, I can do it through Excel, uh, the window of Excel, and now when I look at my data, I can arrange it any way that I want. I can have whatever I want in the rows, whatever I want in the columns, and I can move it around uh, as fast as I can think about how to change it around and look at it in a new way. So I'm not married to the format that was in that spreadsheet when I originally gave it to S-Base. Store for me, please. I think of S-Base as a magic filing cabinet. So if you imagine that you need the answer to a question, and it's somewhere out there in that room full of file cabinets, if you could walk into the correct file cabinet room, whatever one you walked into is the right one, walk up to a file cabinet, and it happens to be labeled the correct year that you needed and you reach out for a drawer and you pull it out and it's the thing that you needed and you finger through the four the folders and they're labeled what you needed and you reach in and you pull out a report and it's got the rows and columns and a grid of data that tell you exactly the answer to the question you were looking for that you never thought of until just now. CFO just came out of his office and he says where did this number come from? We're not supposed to be spending that much money. You go, I don't know. Walk right into the office, open it up, pull it up. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay, that's what S-Base can do for you. Uh, you get at the data in the structure that you need. 
uh, at the time that you need it. It's all out there on the ready for you to query. S-Base is a big deal. I want to show you um, a survey that came from Information Age magazine. It was this a while ago, back in 2005, but they listed the top 10 innovations of the past decade from 95 to 05. And they listed Hyperion S-Base as one of them because of its transformative nature for business. It was just because it was such a game changer for business. It's why we're here today. Look at these other nine things that they listed. Netscape really means the browser. That's kind of a big deal. Blackberry really means mobile phones, right? These are huge. Google, virtualization, Linux, XML. This is, this is basically ubiquitous connectivity to your house. Right, these are all huge game changers to the culture at large. S space is just as big a thing to business. That's why it's important that we get it right. That's why we need to understand who should own S space. But before we're going to answer that question, I want to tell you just a little bit about how S space works, because it does get a little bit techy. S space stores your data in an outline. It has a tree structure. This one here is uh, geographical. This one over here is a product hierarchy. But I get all my data comes in at a high level of granularity, very, very detailed. But really, a lot of the analysis I want to do is at summary levels. S-Space helps me get those summary levels. I put it directly into this outline structure. And they get, all get added together with absolute correctness every single time because S-Base has 20 years of development and testing behind it, I will not have an error creating a roll-up because the outline itself knows how things add together. This says plus, 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 plus. Oh, that one's a minus. That's fine. The outline itself understands the math. That's really huge. But if I can't do it all in the, in the outline, I can do it in a formula. You can see here I'm doing some varying tax calculations in a formula that's calculated, something that I've named income tax, and I have a formula that I can do that. It's a little bit more complex than I could do in the outline math, and that's fine. These, this is a whole bunch of outlines that are telling me current year actuals, some um, rolling averages and things like that that are more complex. I put them into formulas. That's how it does that. Then I have calculation scripts, which are things that I can write. I put them into a file, I save them out there, and then I, when I launch those, they can work on, a, on my whole data set or little subsets of my data and do calculations and create new numbers, new metrics, new KPIs, whatever I need it to do, ratios, rates, and store them back into the database. That's basically what it does. We talked about the data, we talked about the structure, we talked about the calculations. That's how, what that looks like. The architecture here is a server. It's somewhere that's not at your desk. The data's out there. I'm going to access it from my desk. So users will have various ways to get to it. One of the main ways is through the Smart View client. It's a plug-in for Excel. It looks like that. So here we are, what? We were trying to get out of Excel, right? But now we're back in Excel. The key difference here is where the data lives. Data lives on the server. I have a viewer to that data. I can define what data that I want, and it fills in. What I do basically is I tell it, this is everything. I, I need these things to apply to everything on the data sheet. There's a column that I want. There are the rows that I want. At the time, there would be no numbers. When I punch this button right here, refresh, as space looks, uh, the Smart View add-in looks through it figures out what data I was asking for, and populates the grid with the data from the database. That's how SmartView works, and it's not just in Excel. I can actually pull things, uh, reports and things, into Word and PowerPoint as well. A lot of times I will go through Excel and I'll embed those, but uh, SmartView not only works with S-Base, it works with basically the whole EPM suite. I can begin rattling off products and uh, you could begin rattling off products, and likely every one of them would have a smart view interface. Now, there's bunches and bunches of, of decisions that you have to make when you're when you're working with S-Base. You get uh, decisions that 
maybe if I tell you about them right now, it don't make any sense to you, right? ASO, BSO, hybrid decision. There are no less than five different memory caches I have to deal with inside of S space. There's all these tech terms that you hear people throwing around. A dense dimension, a sparse dimension, a dynamic, stored, multiple hierarchies. These are uh, sometimes very difficult questions that you need experts to help you figure out. A lot, I mean, it's important and, and uh, an important responsibility to manage those calculations, the data, the structure. But these you need are even, you know, a little bit more complicated sometimes a lot more complicated in order to make the system work right. So that's the question. Who should own S space? And we're almost to where we can answer that question, but there's an important bit of history to understand another one of the reasons why we're even here asking this question today. So I'm going to give you a brief history of S space. Way back in the day, when S space was first released, it was easy to install, it was marketed to finance departments, and they told you, you can put this on a server under your desk, it sits here, IT doesn't even have to know about it, you don't need them, you, you load it up, and just the people in this department do it, and you don't need IT support, it's really easy and you do it. And that was true at the time, finance departments were the departments that were buying it, they put it on it under the CFO's desk, finance analysts accessed it, and IT didn't know anything about it and they had no responsibility for it. Early use of S-Base, it was a fairly limited thing. It wasn't an enterprise uh, a database. It wasn't an application with a heavy tech overhead. It installed from these things, which our CEO likes to refer to as 3D printed versions of the save icon. Ask anybody under 40, I don't even know what those things are. Uh, for those of you that are under 40, those are like very large, very low capacity thumb drives. And you'd have to put several in to really get anything done. S-Base loaded from how many, Glenn? Three? S-Base loaded originally from three to five? From five. You put it in, hit OK about five times, and you were done. So that's how it used to work. Not very many people accessed it, and it lived right down there. Whoever was working with S-Base was inside the finance department right here. Okay? Over time, because S-Base is such a game-changing technology, everything got more complicated, like they do. When they released the licensed server in one version of S-Base, it was technically insane, very, very difficult to get to work. They introduced the new ASO technology, and it's an entirely different um, kind of multidimensional database, just completely different from the original block storage option. But now I've got two different ways to do almost the same thing with S-Base, but under the covers, the technology is entirely different. And then when they released version 9, now everything is taking up a bunch of different servers, I've got one server to handle logins, I've got another one for S-Base, and I'm now I'm spreading across the, um, the network. I've got multiple servers, and it starts to get kind of techy at this point. And then we want things to be out there on a good storage device, not on a hard drive in that server. I got virtual machines, Linux is beginning to take over the world. Oracle's released Xlytx, which is a giant super server to run S-Base on. These are all things that are making it harder for the business to do it. So a lot of businesses moved over and gave responsibility for S-Base to the IT department. There's a lot of good reasons to do that. You now have a complex server and client environment. You've got data that's going all over the corporate network. Calc scripts look like a programming language. I've been a programmer my whole life. This is a calc script and it looks like code, doesn't it? It's got semicolons, it's got all these at signs and parentheses, all these things going on in there. Looks like code to me. We should give that to IT. Now you've got software development lifecycle, and IT is better at that, taking a project through design, build, test, deploy. That's an IT core competency. And now we're beginning to not just have one S-based server, 
we've got two because we want to do our development and then we want to put it in production. Oh, but maybe we need a third one for testing so the users can access that one. So now we've got multiple environments. It begins to make more sense to give it to IT. There are some problems when IT owns S-Space. For one thing, they don't really understand what they're trying to get it to do, what the numbers are. They always have to go to the business and verify that what they've done is giving the correct results. They're just trying to duplicate what the business knows needs to happen on their own. The department working with S-Space can get buried in the org chart in IT, lose all influence and pull within the company, and S-Space winds up underused in the enterprise. It does one thing, and most of the business isn't even aware that it's there, or the power of it, or how much we can use it within the enterprise. People buried this deep in the org chart get pushed around by directors and other departments. Say, no, we're not gonna analyze that way. I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna, I saw a cool webinar, I'm gonna put all my stuff in this thing in the cloud. There's nothing that these guys can do about it because they don't have the CFO at their back. You see this where it says Hyperion on this org chart? That's me for much of my career. Understanding the power of S-Base and how very much it could be benefiting the company that I worked for. But even my manager didn't know what I did all day long. I used to have a good manager that was an S-Base professional, former consultant, really good boss. He understood S-Base. He was able to make that value proposition, but when he left the company, never backfilled that guy. And I was a level zero guy who knew, who was the only one that knew all the stuff about S-Base, and my boss didn't even know what I did for a living. That's not a good situation. So there's a the problem with IT, and I, I have a good friend of mine, Henry Ryman, um, who did me the pleasure of, of doing one of my pilot sessions. I've been honing this over time. Uh, Henry's actually presented this session for me and gave me the feedback on it. And um, I felt like uh, he has a story too from his past. He told me I could just say it was me and, and that'd be it, but I told him, no, I want, it's your story, you tell it, I've got mine, you tell yours. So Henry's gonna tell you his experience with the issues with IT ownership. So just like Joe, I live this. I uh, was in the industry for 35 years and worked, a corp worked in the corporate world before moving, or earlier this year, moving to NRL and joining the NRL in the consulting world. So in the corporate world, I was just like he was. I lived in that Hyperion box. And I started off, in the, and I started off there and I did a lot of work there in the IT world. And our IT group didn't quite understand what to do with us because we spent, I spent most of my time, it was a small group, spent most of my time working with the business all the time. And over time, as you do that, you learn what the business does. And so IT thought, well, you know, you guys really don't fit here, so let's move you here. But we're still under IT. And you'll really report, you report to me, but you'll take your direction from over there because they kind of know what they want you to do, so we'll work that. And they moved us around, they moved us around, moved us around, and we spent more time in the business. They actually moved us, we physically sat with the business, but we still reported IT. That happened to me too. And that had its pros and cons. Never saw my boss, that was kind of a good, no, anyway. Uh, so, and then what are we gonna do? And then we merged and we did this, we did that. And so things were going along. The business was very happy because they were getting everything they wanted done. They were teaching me what they did and how they did things. It was working very well for them. IT department, we're, you're getting billed to me, but I don't know what you do. I don't understand this stuff. And so one day my boss comes to me and says, we have a problem. You have to, you're too high a grade, you get paid too much money to do what you're doing and you're not doing IT work, you're doing all this stuff, so you need to stop doing what you're doing or we're gonna have to let you go. I wasn't old enough to do that. That really scared the crap out of me. So I went to the business and I said, this is what they wanna do. And they said, what? We can't live without you. Three weeks later, I moved to the business and I spent the last eight years of my career in the business and they were thrilled. IT, it still worked out okay, but but the problem was, and what you're seeing, and what you're gonna hear a little more about is that the people doing the work understand the business and build stuff in there, and the IT part really didn't fit. 
And so it's an interesting management job. And so for me personally, once I got to the finance group and lived there for the last eight years, I have an IT background, but I certainly do a lot of Spoiler alert much? <laughs> You're giving away the reveal. Oh, sorry. no, anyway, no, it's for fine. For me, it worked very well. So. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've, I've uh, exposed my cards. They, they know where you're going. Get they know on. where. They, I think they know where we're going. Thank yeah. Thank you, Henry. Give me a chance to get a drink a little water. So, we've been talking about who should own S-Base. We've asked the question a bunch of times. I've given you some runaround, but now I'm ready to tell you what I think the answer is. Should it be the business? Okay, we've talked about it. They understand the business model. They know what's the correct value that a number is supposed to be. They're the ones that know what the calculations are. They're the ones that are thinking of new things that they have to do. They understand the problems that the business is trying to solve. They understand the data analysis needs that the business has so it can be more profitable and, uh, and succeed. They're the ones that really care about what's going on in there. Should it be IT? It is a complicated system. It's several servers, and there are a lot of really technical things that have to go on in order for S-Base to be successful. I uh, don't want a business department in charge of, let's say, making sure the operating system is secure and not going to get hacked into, right? There's a good reason to want IT to have responsibility because it's really, really important that S-Base is up, that it runs, that it's accurate, that it's safe and secure. But what about both? Okay, can you have each organization play to their strengths? IT handles the infrastructure issues, business handles the applications, Whoever knows about the correct change to make, maybe should be the person with the power to make that change. Some databases in S-Base are different than others. Some of them are more important. Some of them are accessed by more people. Some of them have lots and lots of data in it. Maybe it's reasonable to think that our most important cubes, the biggest ones, the, the ones that we really rely on day in and day out, maybe our external reporting, our 10Ks, are driven off of the data in that cube, and we want really good controls over that. There's good reason maybe we let IT manage that one and still allow the business flexibility to create new cubes and to do things and have kind of a Wild West environment over here for the cubes that aren't uh, really controlling the fate of the company. Maybe you could do that. I'll tell you I think the answer is both. I'll also tell you, it's not quite in the way you might think that the answer is both. Now we know we can't hand responsibility for the servers and the networks and all that stuff to the business. We need IT to do that, we know this. This isn't the hard part. And we know that the business needs to control the logic. They need to, they need to understand what is the correct number. In the end, they control all that stuff. We know this, These are the, this is not why this is a hard question. So the things in between, those calc scripts, doing batches, doing upgrades, patching the systems. This is where the lines get blurred. And sometimes the wrong decisions are made about who should be responsible for that. I say that the degree of success that you're gonna have at the company with S-Base, it could very well depend on how you answer this question. That's an important question. I said there are three tiers of how you uh, deal with S-Base, how that deployment out there. I've got everyday S-Base. These are things that S-Base admins are doing all of the time. I've got everyday IT over here. These are the things that the IT organization does all the time. They do it for everybody, for all the different departments. And I've got this stuff in the middle, this confusing, weird, really techie stuff that only S-Base experts actually know about and know how to do. What do we do with that? So, I give that to the business, definitely. I give that to IT, definitely. And I give that to, well, it kind of depends. Everything depends, always depends, right? So, let's look at that a little bit, okay? Not every business has one of these people that uh, 
that I refer to as techno functional, right? Really great business people. They kind of came from the IT organization, but they they've just gotten to swim around with Aspace and they love it. They just adapted to it as soon as they found out about it. Not every business has that. And some areas of that are just too complicated uh, for IT to do. So this is what I'm, I'm going to tell you. And not everyone agrees, but a lot of the people with, with the most experience that I've talked to about, they tend to feel this way. But I'm telling you, if you have those techno-functional, really techy people like Henry was at his company, like I was at mine, that are good with S-Space, that really aren't, they don't really do anything that you would list in the top 20 things that IT does in a generic sense. Put them in a business department, let them be the most technical person in that department, and do S-Space all the time and live with inside of the business. If there are not people like that at the company, I say that you should take those functions and outsource them. Get in contact with people who are experts that can do that middle tier of work on the occasions that you need that. It's, you need someone to contact for those occasional complex things. It's a great way to use your consulting dollars. It will cost you less than having a full-time FTE um, on the company that is struggling and doesn't know. Have someone out there, you gotta need to outsource, just get, have a connection to, the, to ACEs in the world that can help you when things get complicated. I work with a lot of companies that just do not have a really high value S-Base admin in the company, and they also don't have a contact a connection to an expert to help them solve their problems. They, they just struggle all day long. And there's no reason to do that. Now, I am not saying your business shouldn't have highly skilled, highly technical S-based administrators. I very much want you to do that. I'm saying that if you've assigned them to the IT department, you've put them in the wrong place. Also, if you don't have one, I think you should get one and then assign them to the business. And also, have external experts that you can call when you need them because sometimes S-Base is doing really crazy stuff that you don't understand and even your really good technical people within the company don't understand it. They can't figure it out and they need the resources to be able to find out what the answers are. Going back to how S-Base got started, to understand why this is the right answer. One way to think about S-Base is that S-Base is not a relational database that was exposed to toxic waste. That's not where it comes from. S-Base is a cell that has been bitten by a radioactive spider. It's S-Base on steroids. I mean, it's, it's a cell on steroids is what, how it was originally thought of within the business. Its origins are from Excel, our needs with Excel. Not to have a different kind of database. Okay? Now for those that are gonna uh, download this in the future and they don't have the benefit of being here, I also have those things in text so uh, you know, you'll remember what this slide is all about when you download it and look at it again later. Now, let's go back and look at those calc scripts. Okay? We said they look pretty techy, right? Well, don't Excel formulas look pretty techy at times? Don't you have people inside of the business that are Excel jockeys and their formulas are like, I didn't even know that exists. You know, what, is, what does some even mean? You guys use a lot of some if, don't you, Mike? Yeah, I didn't even, I, I didn't even know about that one uh, until, you know, a couple years ago, but it's really cool. But some people are really good at writing formulas. Well, you know, that's what that, that's pretty techy right there, right? Well, I say um, calc script is more like that formula. It's got stuff in there. I gotta call functions, I gotta do stuff, right? But the business user understands everything that needs to happen. They just need the chops to make it happen. And if, if they want to do it and, they, and they, they're well suited to it, 
they'll figure out how to do that. They'll know how to do it, they'll go to training and they figure that out. The same as people get really good with Excel. It's not the same as Java programming or any other programming. I've done programming for decades and I've done um, calc scripts for a decade and a half and they're different things. So as techy as it looks, um, you can't just look at it and go, oh, well that's programming, we need to give it to programmers. Nobody who's a programmer has a leg up on anybody to figure out how to write calc scripts. I might as well ask my really sharp financial analysts to be the ones to learn how to write calc scripts. If you, uh, if you want to think of another way of looking at this problem uh, and why I think the hardcore work going on within the software should be within the business, you think about your GL software, what do I have IT do, right? They run the servers, they install the software, and they leave it be. The accountants are the ones that are going in, they're setting the chart of accounts, they're doing all the formulas, they're doing all of the work in there. I don't ask IT to add accounts to the chart of accounts. I don't ask IT to change what the roll-ups are. I don't ask, the, no more than I would ask them to, to write Excel formulas for me, right? So if you think about it that way, it makes sense for the people in the business to be the ones doing all that work. And uh, S-Base works the same way. I still need IT to do that hardcore technical stuff for me. But uh, the stuff that's S-Base specific, I don't. This is an organizational structure for, I'd recommend for a small business or someone just getting started with S-Base. S-Base is a tool you can use with a vast array of data sets, but its most natural home is with financial data. It's where every company goes with it first. I have no problem with a small organization if you're just getting started with, it, with S space to let it live in the finance department. That's the first kind of data you're going to be going after anyway. I'm going to have close relationships with IT, right? On an earlier slide, I think I said we need someone to ha who, who is techie within the business uh, or that business's representative that's been outsourced to be the interface with IT. So they can talk that language and they can, and if they start talking about Java heap sizes or whatever, you don't have to glaze over, you know, yeah, okay, yeah, I get it. And, and they can translate the IT knowledge to their S-based knowledge to explain it to the business. Gonna have people outside. Now for that SDLC stuff where we need to have proper project management and stuff, businesses will usually have an external project management organization we can interface directly with the finance department and help them manage their larger projects to create larger cubes that are more important to the business. Now, as you grow and change and your S-Base footprint gets larger and you're attacking more data sets than ever and you're pulling in sales data, operational data, logistics data, HR data, it doesn't make as much sense for finance to own that anymore. So I abstract that out to another department. This is my center of excellence that delivers analytics to the entire company. Still lives within the business. It's not exactly in uh, finance, but it's really nearby and it rolls nearly directly to the CFO. One or two steps. And then the, the entire enterprise is able to take advantage of S-Base. I still have connections to external consultants. I still have very deep, close connections with my partners in IT. I'm still interacting with the project management groups. And of course, they're allowed to talk to each other. I do, I, uh, the first time I delivered this presentation on the pilot, I got complaints that I wasn't allowing the project management office to talk to the business units, and I said, I'm completely good with adding an extra arrow into my diagram. I'm not, I'm not cutting off communications there. So we get everybody's talking to one another and fulfilling the correct roles. But there's an elephant in the room. We have not even talked about the cloud at all yet. What do you hear about though throughout the K-Scope conference all of the time? What am I wearing a shirt 
about, right? It's all about the cloud, it's coming, right? So how does that factor in? If I get S space going on in the cloud or other EPM things, right? I still want that business unit that delivers excellence, interfacing with the cloud and doing stuff with IT there too. But let's look at what IT does for us now. I don't need IT to do very much for me anymore because almost everything IT was needed for has now gone to the cloud. All I need IT to do is help me get my data, right, ETL, extract, transform, load, right, getting data from one place to another. Help me get my data, please, and please make sure I've got a really nice, fast, reliable connection to the internet because now I need that more. We had VPN up there before. I needed to get a good connection into the server to the data center. I don't need that now. I need to get out to the internet. These things move around very slightly, but you can see here the role of IT is completely changed. And, and that's fine. Now, did you have a question? Let's see, I've got 13 minutes and 10 slides. Uh, I have time for your question right now. I completely, I completely agree. So the question is about um, other roles that IT does need to play that I, I haven't listed here, but that's a really good point, um, where they really need to be ch checking up on what the procedures are, talking with that cloud vendor, vetting them and making sure that they're gonna be good data, stewards of the data, so uh, we do need a, yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, that partnership, oh, I'm giving away the, giving away the farm. Um, that partnership, um, we'll, we'll cover more areas than maybe just those two, but uh, that's a good point, thank you. Uh, I actually sent out a survey to several um, people out in the industry, a lot of them uh, from around here, uh, and I asked them this very question. And I, did, I just asked them for two things. I said, uh, here's my topic. I just gave them the, the name of the presentation. I said, here's the topic. I'd like to ask from you a vote and a quote. I sent out 19 emails. Um, I wanted an odd number because I, I want to avoid a tie up front. And I chose a prime number just because I'm weird and I wanted to do a prime number. 19, it just felt right when I got to 19. I just, who, who can I email? Okay, that person, that person, that person. Okay, 19, that feels good, and I quit. I got these responses. I got, how many have I got there? 16 responses. Actually, I got 17 responses. One of them declined to vote, but provided a quote. One of them provided a vote, but asked me not to quote them. So 16 total units of vote. Now I don't want to expose the people, it may embarrass them, I don't really want you to know who said what, but, uh, so I've anonymized the responses a little bit, but you'll know that uh, I did get from an Edward R that he thinks Whoever is the first one to be aware that a change needs to happen, they're the ones that understand why. They should have the power to actually make that change instead of having to call up somebody else to do that. A Cameron L feels that the, the level of importance of S-Base to the business versus to IT is astronomical. A problem with S-Base is just another headache for the IT department. For the business, it's critical. If they're blind to what their data is. Now, some people felt the other way. Natalie D felt like finance departments don't tend to show, she has a lot of experience, don't tend to have enough discipline to keep those cubes well managed, curated, and have good change controls over it. Some people wanted to talk about both. I got a both, I got a both. Um, these, are, these are the ones here, and what they were mostly trying to do is say what I'm saying. They were saying business should have the bulk of it, but IT is really important for some of these things. 
Um, so I got eight that were just straight up business, like this uh, Ron M. fella, no question about that. Um, some people were a little bit more on the fence. My boths are mostly, they were saying business, but IT too. So I wanted to separate that out because some people felt like the role of IT is important enough that they had to add the caveat into their vote. They couldn't solidly take sides with the business alone. That's the result from those. Um, uh, Opal says that uh, S-Base in the end hasn't changed that much. The fundamental concept and idea of S-Base is the same as it was back in the day when there's a little server circled in red underneath somebody's desk. So that's some of the feedback I got from them. In the end, summarize what I'm saying. Be careful asking an IT resource to learn S-Base. It's not a part-time job. It's not, I mean, you can do that if they have the interest, if that's what they want to do, if that's where they want to go. If you want to pick a sharp person, from your IT organization and ask them to learn S-Base, that's great, you can do that, just be careful. If they're gonna do that, dedicate them to S-Base. Don't ask them to do it as a part-time job. I actually worked together with my brother at one of the companies that I did S-Base administration as. He was the guy that had to actually run the server and he never understood what was going on. He had a completely different job and every couple of months, he was in charge of doing some thing with S-Base, and he never even understood what he was doing. I don't, want, I don't want anybody doing that. If you're gonna create an expert, that's great, and then stick them into the business. Let IT be IT, S-Base specialists within the business, and get connected with outside resources to answer those questions that you're having trouble getting the answers to. And the business will always need a highly technical representative interface with IT. That could be that techno-functional person that you have within finance or the center of excellence, or it could be that expert you have available. When you do a phone a friend, you want to take that person and have them do the communication with IT because they really need to understand the technical things that IT is telling them and can, and can explain that and, and give, it, give that information back to the business. I got one last quote. It was to me, it was too good to distill down to a blurb and put on that one slide with everybody else's quotes. This comes from a Harry G. Uh, who said he might come, but he didn't come. Harry G. says, "IT should be responsible for the provision and maintenance of the required infrastructure, servers, networks, and relational repositories." The business, however, should have sole ownership of the Hyperion applications themselves. They must have the ability to make any and all changes deemed necessary to support their operations without having to obtain IT approval or consent. It's a pretty powerful statement. It pretty much sums up what I've been talking about here. So I wanted to put that out there. For you to see, I thought that he put it really well. This is a somewhat controversial position to take. But most of the people that I've talked to uh, since October, when the, um, when the presentation was accepted, have, um, have granted some form of this, maybe not quite so strongly worded, but with the cloud happening and S space moving to the cloud, and the way S-Base works and the way you even create cubes now happening and that pendulum shifting back. Steve Liebermensch uh, is directly talking about getting back to the days when this, it was like when the server sat under the CFO's desk and the, and the finance admins were running the whole show. They're actively trying to get back to that paradigm. So I think we should play ball and be ready to do that with them. Very last thing, I got a quote from a fellow named Gabby R who happens to share a first name and a last initial with the product manager of S-Space uh, at Oracle. And this fellow Gabby R gave me this quote, 
Uh, most, mostly, he's calling out the role of S-Space. We need to create an experience that empowers the business user to innovate and evolve. We want S-Space to be enterprise-wide, and that's one of S-Space's key challenges to get to that spot. We're enabling the business. We're going across the entire enterprise, and we're innovating. So that is the last slide of content. I'll leave you here with Gabby's quote to ponder that as you leave. Title of the session is Torn Between Two Worlds. I want to tell you real quick about uh, some things that NRL does uh, to help you continue to learn and grow um, in your EPM skills. We have a video series, more than 100 videos now. The URL is super easy to get to, epm.bi slash videos. You don't even have to write it down, it's so easy. epm.bi slash videos. They're getting really popular. We've got lots and lots of subjects covered there. We have books, a lot of books, new books, brand new books, all about the cloud, planning out there. Um, EPRCS is brand new, just got released at this conference. This is a great thing, this great tool. It's gonna, I think it's gonna get a huge footprint out there as people are moving to narrative reporting. You could if you wanted to, go buy a book if you really want to. Um, and that's it. Uh, we have some, oh, this happened to me yesterday. I have a different thing showing here than you have up there. Oh, now it's working. We go out and do free road shows, training events, multi-track, uh, you can come, if, if one's coming to a city near you, uh, there's a good chance that I'll be presenting at that one as well. This is the upcoming schedule. If it's in your town or near your town, I hope I'll see you there. And that's the end. Uh, Henry wants me to remind you uh, to fill out your evaluations. My name's Joe A, I'm an S-Base admin. There is space, by the way. It's just about um, the space on the evaluation. There's a room on the left if you want to write in a six or seven or something like that. There's room on the right to write in a zero if you feel compelled to do that as well. It's just guidelines. So uh, I'd appreciate it if you give me the feedback. I want to go and talk to people about this subject. I want to hear what people are thinking, so give me your feedback. Um, if I go all the way back to the beginning, um, this is my contact information. This is me, you can get directly me right here. I encourage you, I invite you to do that, contact me directly. Some of our things say info at NRL. My name's not info, my name's Jay Altman. Okay, so evals, emails, whatever you want, okay? Thank you so much for coming. This is something that's really important to me and I hope that I've given you some understanding uh, some other way of looking at it. Thank you very much. We have a break now, so go get a coat, go get a cookie, whatever it is out there. Thanks a lot.